everyone, welcome back to Bronco Wild Outdoors. Today's video is on the 2.3 liter four cylinder that's found in the new 2021 Ford Bronco and the soon to be 2022 Ford Bronco. So let's talk about the history of the 2.3 just so you're clear on what engine is actually in the Bronco. Uh, in 1974, Ford introduced the Lima 2.3. This was a single overhead cam, cast block, cast cylinder head engine. It didn't make a whole lot of horsepower and it ran from 1974 until 1997. It powered multiple vehicles, Ranger, Capri, Mustang, maybe even a minivan or two. Uh, it was a great engine. And over that time period, it saw increased horsepower, increased fuel economy. At one point, two spark plugs per cylinder and in the mid 80s, Ford boosted it to put it in the SVO Mustang. But that engine has nothing to do with the 2.3 liter that is found in the new Bronco. And certain conversations I'll see and read and hear where it's been a great engine for 30 or 40 years. Well, it has been a great engine, it's just not this engine. So here's the backstory. In 2000, Ford came up with a program called the Duratec program. Uh, multiple engines in that Duratec family and the 2.0 was derived from or came from the Mazda L. So the Mazda, Volvo and Ford engineers put their heads together and came up with the uh, Duratec program and the Duratec 2.0 uh, ran up until, well, it's still running today. It's just been modified quite a bit. But in 2010, the EcoBoost 2.0 was created. That engine was the launch pad for this 2.3. In 2015, Ford introduced the 2.3 EcoBoost. Uh, this engine is really, really cool. It only shares two things with the 2.0, the deck height, which is measured from the center of the crank to the top of the block where the cylinder head bolts. That dimension is the same. And also the cylinder bore or the diameter of the cylinder is the exact same. And that is it. The 2.3 is a completely separate block. It has larger oiling passages and water passages. Uh, the internals are different as well. Uh, but uh, before we get to the internals, reinforced, ladder reinforced uh, ribs around the cylinder wall. Uh, a lot stronger engine. But the internals, I'm excited to get there because it's pretty cool. Ford, uh, uh, Ford used forged 4340 steel for the crank and the connecting rods. Uh, now this is a very durable, heat treated steel. It's, uh, it's, it's, real, it's used in race engines. We use it in performance stuff all across the board. It's pretty impressive that Ford went to that extent to put it into the uh, Bronco. And by the way, we're standing in front of my 2.7 Badlands here. I don't have a 2.3 here to show you, so uh, we're just talking about it with this in the background. Hope you don't mind. Um, and by the way, I do love my 2.7 Bronco. This thing is awesome. But the 2.3 is a great engine, and I want to tell you a few uh, unique features about it. If you have a 2.3 or considering it or you have one on order, uh, you should be very comfortable in what you're getting. Uh, so first of all, the forged crank and rods like we just talked about. Uh, the oil pan is aluminum and the entire engine is cast aluminum, by the way, including the cylinder head. So unlike the 2.7 where you have uh, CGI as part of the block and aluminum as part of the block, this is all cast aluminum. Oil pan, block, cylinder block, and cylinder head. But it's a deep sump oil pan. Uh, there is baffles inside. That helps you when you're off-roading, you're bouncing around, keeps the oil from sloshing and the oil pump calvitating and actually running out of oil. Um, you also have a pretty steep uh, degree on this Bronco. I think that if you're going down, say down a hill, uh, pointing down, uh, that 45 degrees, or maybe even up as well. And I know left and right about 30 degrees. So this Bronco can lean pretty stoutly and also still pump oil and not worry about uh, calvitating. Um, but the baffles in the oil pump are great. Uh, we do have a dual overhead cam engine here and each cam is its variable timing. So you have cam phasers on this engine as well and a time and chain that really helps. Uh, pretty thick, durable metal time and chain. Uh, before we get too far on top of the engine, there is a high volume, high velocity chain driven oil pump in this engine, different than the belt driven variable capacity pump in the 2.7. Now, when we get to the pistons, this is really, really cool how they integrated some cool stuff with the pistons as well as the oiling system in the block. Okay, so the pistons are alloy aluminum with steel ring lands. The top of the piston is reinforced for the heat that the turbo is gonna give this engine. 
and so the ring lens are uh, hardened and uh, very capable of handling the pressure. Now there's uh, different oiling holes in the friction ring or oil ring on the side of the piston. The, the lower ring on the side of the piston is a friction ring, an oil ring, and there's oiling holes there. So the oiling holes have been formed so that there's, uh, there's less drag on the side of the piston. You know, we talked about that before. Aer uh, people in aerospace love that, but it's really resistance. Um, and uh, or friction and used in engines. I guess we want to talk friction and not drag like I said last week. Um, but uh, it, it, it adds enough lubrication on the sonar walls, but also this engine has uh, special oil uh, oilers that are in the block that sprays oil underneath the piston. Now this is critical because uh, the cylinder, by the way, the bigger the diameter of the piston, the more heat it absorbs. And on a boosted engine, there's a lot of heat there. Ford kept the piston small in diameter, um, and they did some cool stuff with the design on the top of the piston to try to dissipate the heat. Now, the oilers that are in the block, they spray oil underneath the piston, and this absorbs heat from the top of the piston down to kind of help keep that piston cool. That's different than any other engine out there because it enables... Uh, and there may be an engine on the planet with it. It's just not a typical oiling system for underneath the cylinder block. So it's actually pretty cool uh, that they are, they're looking at dropping the temperature of the head of the piston by spraying oil underneath it. So, and it doesn't hurt uh, resistance in the engine or friction, so to speak. Um, now, in the cylinder head, this really gets cool. This is an integrated exhaust manifold, just like the 2.7. Uh, there are passages, let's just call them chambers, that lead to a dual scroll single turbo on this engine. Now if you remember the 2.7 has twin turbos, so two monoscroll turbos. This has one dual scroll turbo. Now this is where it gets really technical. So there's something in the engine called pulse. And every time a cylinder fires, the exhaust valve opens, there's a sudden rush of pressure in the manifold. And what happens is when all your cylinders are dumping into one common manifold, the turbo doesn't get an even flow of pressure and temperature. It's getting these pulses, these, and that hurts the turbo keeping it uh, spinning uh, as tight as it should or as, or as fast as it should. And there's also some lag in getting it going. So what Ford did, uh, this is four cylinder. So if we picture the front cylinder is one, the one behind that's two, three, and four. Uh, the way this engine fires, Ford decided to add cylinders one and four in one chamber and two and three in another chamber. So the firing order on this engine is one, three, four, and two. So basically what happens is cylinder one fires, dump into the exhaust. The next cylinder to fire is three. That dumps into that chamber, which remember is separate. Then cylinder four fires off again, and that puts it back in the first chamber. And then cylinder two fires and puts it in the other chamber. Basically, you don't have these opposing forces of exhaust dumping into the chamber feeding the turbo or the exhaust manifold. In this case, it's an integrated, uh, integrated exhaust manifold as well. So that's been really cool to keep this small diameter uh, dual scroll turbo spinning fast. Now, uh, this helps with low end torque. It actually helps with torque all across the power band but it really gives you uh, the least amount of turbo lag that you can expect, along with the turbo being mounted close to the engine, that helps with uh, limiting turbo lag as well. And so these two things right there are, are huge. Now, I've, I've seen in some of the forums, people say, well, the turbos are so small. Well, there's a reason for it. The turbo moves exactly what it needs to move in this engine, but the smaller the diameter of the turbo itself, the, the turbine, is it spins up faster so you have instant more instant horsepower and it carries all the way through that torque band and uh or that uh, power band that you have so the torque on this engine is is uh pretty gradual but constant so you don't have this sudden peak if you look at it on a on a a, a dyno you wouldn't see this blurp and and then you know kind of falls off this thing carries it pretty well uh, so as you're coming up to speed on the interstate you're doing a little baja stuff um, this engine's pretty tight. I like it for the low end torque. Uh, now, uh, getting back to the torque, if you look at a 2.0 and a 2.3, you could say that a 2.3 is a 2.0 stroker motor uh, because 
the rods in this or in the 2.3 are shorter than they are in a 2.0, but the throw of the crank is longer. Um, you know, there's a way to figure uh, the stroke of an engine and basically is when the rod journal is the furthest from the cylinder head, you do the center line measurement and the rod and the journal is closest to the cylinder head, you do a center line there and the difference in that travel is the stroke. Um, and Ford's did some pretty cool stuff with the piston design um, as, as well as the crank. So uh, this has a longer stroke, which is better for torque and especially lower end torque. So the 2.3 is, uh, it's pretty substantial. You know, the horsepower on regular gas is 275 horsepower and 315 feet pounds of torque. Where, and if you use premium gas, you're at 300 horsepower and 325 feet pounds of torque. So it's pretty, pretty strong engine. Um, so we've covered the turbo and sort of the cool things about the turbo, which we do have a video coming up on turbo etiquette. Uh, and those are two words you don't typically hear in one sentence, but it's the truth. There's a way that you can take care of the turbo on your Bronco to make it last a lot longer. And if you're new to the turbo world, you probably want to check this out because there's some helpful hints in there. If you've had turbos for years, you get it. You already know this, I'm sure. Uh, but hey, watch it. Who knows? Might be good for entertainment for you. Um, but, you know, my goal is to help educate people on these engines and kind of the inner workings of them. So the 2.3 is a very reliable, uh, reliable engine. It's used across multiple platforms, uh, which serves as an issue. Uh, the one issue being, if you try to Google what's the compression ratio uh, on a 2.3 EcoBoost. Now, you might see 9.4 to 1, you might see 9.5 to 1, uh, you also see 10 to 1. Um, and in the Bronco's case, the, uh, the uh, compression ratio is 10 to 1. Uh, you know, the uh, Focus RS, which creates, I think, about 350 horsepower, it's 9.4 to 1. Uh, the Mustang is a little bit different. And it's, um, it's some, I think it's 9.5 to one and the horsepower on that one is, is different. I can't remember exactly, maybe mid thirties uh, or 330s, uh, 320, 330, something like that. So you can see that the architecture of the 2.3 spans multiple uh, models and also multiple horsepower. So the basic architecture that you have in the 2.3 is capable um, of a lot of, uh, a lot of upsizing for there. So um, anyway, you know, Ford's built this engine with the torque and the horsepower to meet and fit the needs of the Bronco. And so keep that in mind. It's not just the most horsepower or the most torque. And horsepower and torque, by the way, if you ever want a good read and get confused, read up the correlation between horsepower and torque. Uh, basically, torque is what I'm concerned about because that's the ability to turn a shaft, a crank, uh, an axle, a drive shaft, a wheel, and that's the ability. Horsepower, you know, bad example gets you there in a hurry so uh, but this engine's really uh, really awesome I think uh, if you get it you're gonna like it you know the variable cam timing is something that is very beneficial uh, it is direct injection uh, so we don't have the luxury of dual injection on this engine where you have one injector is spraying gas into the intake to help wash the intake valve off uh, so you definitely want to make sure that the, you're using a high quality oil, either recommended by Ford, or you can look at some uh, full synthetics. This engine does have a synthetic blend of oil, just like the 2.7. Uh, if you watch my 2.7 video, I did mistakenly say full synthetic because everything I own is full synthetic, and I uh, just made that mistake, but it is a synthetic blend. Um, hey, incidentally, if you look at your owner's manual under the uh, specifications uh, section, uh, if you go to maintenance and then under specifications, there's a blip about an uh, alternative oil for you to use as far as a weight. If you're in very cold climates, uh, you have for cold starting, you have the option of using 030 versus 5, uh, 530. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, it's something to check out. And uh, hey, Hope you like this video. Just a little bit on the 2.3. Uh, might not be as in-depth as the other engine, but basically it's a solid engine. Um, aluminum, cast aluminum uh, block, cylinder head, even an oil pan. Uh, now this engine uses a spin-on filter uh, versus the cartridge filter that is in the, the canister. That is in the 2.7. So it's more of a traditional metal oil plug versus plastic, as well as a traditional oil filter. Um, uh, trying to think some other stuff on there that, hey, and by the way, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to our channel, 
hit me up in the comments uh, other questions that you have about this engine the 2.3 uh, any question you have at all you know uh, it, like I said I don't want to give too much of the technical uh, you know get into you know the the turbos and everything else any more than what we did because it gets kind of like it's like spaghetti right it really is but those are the basics the 2.3 is a good solid engine great architecture it's been around since 2015 and they're constantly changing things like the injector pocket in the piston is different than say some of the other 2.3s out there so the small changes that's happened has been unique and i think unique to bronco you have a little bit difference in the mustang or the focus rs and so anyway hope you liked the video and please like and subscribe uh subscribe to our channel hit the like on this video if you don't mind that helps youtube send this out to other people that like bronco content and and we're trying to spread the word so i hope this was helpful if you have any questions please let me know see ya